2021 Community Change Champion Awards, Rooted and Rising. Now, this is our second year hosting a virtual event. And even though I personally miss being together in person, I'm really excited to be in this space with folks from all over the country representing the breadth and depth of our movement. Now, the Community Change Champions Awards is a celebration. It's a chance to recognize and cheer for the organizers, the labor leaders, and of course, the disruptors who power our movement for social justice. But the victories that we've won this year were not inevitable. The battles we're fighting are not foregone conclusions. And as of course, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the time and persistent work of ded dedicated individuals, or to say it in one word, organizing. We are at the precipice of transformational change because of the time and persistent work of dedicated individuals, many of whom are in this room, or rather this virtual space. Our movement is rooted in moments that build and keep building. Moments like day one of DACA, when all across the country, partners of Community Change's Fair Immigration Reform Movement opened their doors to start processing applications in lines stretched for miles. Actions that capture the creativity of our movement from bringing waffles to Senator Clinton's home to the man that she stopped waffling in 2002, all the way to just this year, the tax day pie action to demand that Democrats bake in the child tax credit. And the leaders and organizers who change us forever, seeing them rise into their power and being called into our own. Now community change is rooted in these moments and the political earthquakes that they bring about. This organization is defined by the periods when the ground shifts under our feet, and we see those tectonic plates beneath our system. 25 years ago, 25 years ago, it was so-called welfare reform that led us into national policy fights and launched the National Campaign for Jobs and Income Support, which, by the way, led to winning a partially refundable child tax credit, and it birthed the fair immigration reform movement. And we know that this moment, is rooted in our electoral work, years of organizing, our vision for the future that our communities deserve, and our partners who are building and wielding power from the ground up. We created the opportunity we have before us. We set the agenda, and I believe we will win. But we need you. Thank you to those who have already given generously to support our work. We need every one of you to be all in during this moment. This moment when everything is on the line for immigration reform, for permanent child tax credit and child care investments, for the broader just recovery that our communities need. So please consider giving what you can. And in this virtual space, donating is easier than ever. All you have to do is text CHAMPION to 40649 or click the donate link in the event chat box to give at this very critical moment. And then of course, after this event, we need you to keep going. We need you to call your members of Congress. We need you to get your friends and families and cousins and everybody to call their members of Congress. Join a texting party with Community Change Action. Every Wednesday night, we're coming together on Zoom, getting leaders engaged and building a volunteer base. On this platform, you will see an expo booth where you can check out more ways to be involved and to gather information. Right now, you can use the chat box to share what you're doing to deliver for our communities in this pivotal moment. One benefit of this virtual space is that nobody's gonna shh you if you're chatting to the speakers and no one's gonna comment if you get a glass of wine for that matter, or maybe some people will make it a good drink. So tonight is a celebration, but it's also a call to action, a call to recommit to the persistent work that drives human progress. Because as Dr. King continued in his speech, we still have a long, long way to go. Before we turn to the champions that we're honoring tonight, I wanna be sure we also remember the many leaders and giants and ordinary people who aren't here to see the progress that we've made. The legacies of Bob Moses, of Richard Trumka are palpable tonight. So are John Lewis and Gloria Richardson and Lucille Times. And so are the lives and the memories of the nearly 700,000 people taken by COVID-19 in this country. The arc of social justice, the arc of our work in this movement spans lifetimes. It is our responsibility and it's our privilege to be alive and in the movement during this particular fight and in the company of champions like the ones that we will honor tonight. So thank you 
Thank you for taking this time to root yourself in the power of our movement and to celebrate the champions rising in their own power and purpose. First up, our 2021 Emerging Change Champion, Lorena K. Rose Lewis. That's why I want to change Mississippi. American Black Freedom Movement organizer and activist Fannie Lou Hamer said, you don't run away from your problems, you just face them. When immigration and customs enforcement agents stormed into seven poultry plants just east of Jackson, Mississippi in August, 2019, Lorena Kiros Lewis faced the crisis head on. We can make things really happen. She organized to meet the immediate needs of the families directly impacted and the broader immigrant community, providing Know Your Rights information, building a rapid response network, and organizing a broader coalition of legal representation, service providers, faith and community leaders, and national partners and allies. And Lorena understands the deeper problems in Mississippi and the South. Rooted in the Delta flatlands of her daughter's birth, Lorena is rising. As she says, I needed to fight the hate that wants to see us disappear. She founded the Immigrant Alliance for Justice and Equity in Mississippi to build the power of marginalized, multiracial, and immigrant communities. A member of Community Change's Fair Immigration Reform Movement Network, the Freedom Together Campaign, and We Are Home, Immigrant Alliance for Justice and Equity in Mississippi is building the power of Black and Brown people to rise. As part of the Petra Foundation's legacy, we honor the unsung heroes like Lorena who are courageously fighting to make the world more just. For building an immigrant-led movement in the Deep South pointed at long-term systemic change, Community Change is proud to recognize Lorena Kiros Lewis with the 2021 Emerging Change Champion Award. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lorena Quiroz Lewis, um, and I am, I'm an immigrant from Ecuador, originally from Ecuador. Um, I was raised in, in New York, but I spent the last 24 years in, in Mississippi, in the rural South. And I am so grateful to be here among family and friends and colleagues. Uh, we at Yahe, uh, Immigrant Alliance for Justice and Equity, you know, our team, our staff, our volunteers, members, fellows, we call ourselves the Yahe Familia. Uh, so by extension, you are part of the family. Because as a Latina, you know, as an immigrant, that's how we lead, right? We lead as, as a family um, in community. At Yahe, our work is a result of countless hours put in from allies, leaders, community folks, uh, religious leaders, Families, families whose members were detained that fateful day on August of 2019, who put in their time, their resources, but most importantly, their heart. They put in, in their heart to do this work. Folks who would work eight to 12 hours a day and then run, run to the community meeting to strategize, to organize, to pick up people from the detention centers, to drive hours into the middle of the night into detention centers that would hold their loved ones, to pick up maybe one or two folks as they were being freed, because it was important to bring our families together, because it's about families, it's about us. This work is personal. This work is about our gente our familia. And because it is, it's, it's a work that's, that's heavy, that's heavy on our minds and our hearts. And so some of the lessons that um, I've learned and at the Yahe Familia we've learned is that at the times when things are hard, times when your heart is hurting, when you're watching things 
unfold, such as that we're seeing unfold on the national scale um, that has brought us to tears because of the hard work put into, that we need to go back, that we need to hold tight to our ancestral and communal practices, that when obstacles seem impossible to overcome, we need to step back and sit and surround ourselves with family. That sometimes means a family that you have created. That sometimes means that it's the folks that you are working and luchando with to gather the strength, to revel in the love, and to take in all, to be allow yourself to be vulnerable and just absorb the love that this family that you build provides. That's how we're able to gather the strength to keep going, to go on. We're constantly reminded in this work that we take care of us. Administrations, leadership institutions can come and go, but it's family, it's community that stays. It's community that will bring lasting changes to Mississippi, to the South, and to the nation. Organizing in the South has many challenges, lack of resources, transportation, technology, the fact that we're in rural communities that can at times remain hidden from sight, the labels that are placed upon us that we are less than in the South, that we are not as smart as, we are not as capable as, we are not as strong as, but we have withstood in spite of the lack, despite of the systemic oppression that surrounds us here in the South and in Mississippi and in rural communities, we're still here. And we're here because we are as intelligent, as capable, as brilliant, as resourceful as the rest of the nation and the world. And what we need are the resources, the resources that are so abundant in other spaces. And so at this time, I wanna thank Community Change and the Petra Foundation. And most of all, thank my people, our familia Yaje, our community leaders, uh, we're very grateful for the visibility that this award will bring us, our community here in Mississippi. Uh, visibility to a work and a movement whose goal is to lift the voices of our people. Lifting the voices of a community because it is only through community through which the South will rise. Thank you, everybody. when you start fighting for something like a union, you you begin to have this, this beautiful thing called hope. In the past year and a half, all of us have looked to frontline essential workers to find hope. They're the ones who have kept us fed and who have cared for our family members. They've delivered the mail, picked up the trash, and made sure that remote learning doesn't mean that kids who depend on school lunches would go hungry. Some days I helped with at the resource center to do drive up food distribution. Um, other days I was actually in the cafeteria making the grab and go lunches. Um, so everyone was kind of doing whatever we needed to. We clap for them. We thank them on social media. And UFCW, SEIU, AFSME, NEA, APWU, and Unite Here had their backs. My name is Jeffrey Reed. Hi, my name is Lourdes Nevarez. Uh, my name is Alpha Buford. I'm in uh, Oklahoma City. My name is Vanessa Jimenez. My name is Aaron Brown. Jeffrey and Lourdes, Alpha and Vanessa, Aaron and so many others like them carried us through the pandemic. And they reminded us of the power and dignity of all work. The cold, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we're always out there uh, doing a service for our community and we're and we're proud to do it. And with their unions, the essential workers on the front lines of the pandemic stood in solidarity to demand justice and to demand policies and actions that go far beyond empty gestures. The coronavirus response has, has showcased labor's dual role in the United States as well, because not only have, you know, organized labor been advocating for workers in the workplace, they've been engaged in, in, in politics and trying to you know, hold politicians accountable. Unions and the community they provide got workers through the pandemic, even when they lost their jobs. Felt um, solidarity, which was something that once you feel and once you want and you fight for, you never stop. My name is Hilda Renteria Hernandez. 
Although 98% of its members were laid off during the first peak of the pandemic, Unite Here mobilized Hilda and thousands of their members to turn out voters in the 2020 election. Their work helped to set the table for the ongoing fights for essential workers. Tangeli, along with SEIU and home health care workers like her, are fighting to make sure that a just recovery includes real investments in care work. I am Tanja Lee. I am in this fight because I believe in power for the ground up for home health care. I believe that we should be respected, protected, and paid as essential workers. And in one of the most high profile fights for worker power, the UFCW and RWDSU are continuing to organize with Amazon warehouse workers like Jennifer Bates in Bessemer, Alabama. And I begin to push that we may have the right to stand up and speak on our job for our fairness as a working class people. Hi, my name is Jennifer Bates. This is Power from the Ground Up. I've been a case service aide for 20 years. And I truly believe in the power that comes in serving my community, children, and families to be able to provide some hope. Throughout the pandemic, we have proven that the millions and millions of workers across the country are the true strength and backbone of the country. And that also the tens of millions of workers around the world are the true strength of humanity. And through the power of workers rooted in organizing, the labor movement is rising to demand justice. No justice, no peace. The fight will continue. Community Change is proud to honor all frontline essential workers as the 2021 Change Champion in Labor Partnership. Hi, I'm Becky Wasserman, uh, Director of Government Relations for SCIU, and I'm joined by my sister in the labor movement, our, our AFL-CIO Executive Vice President Emeritus and Chair of our Board at Community Change, Arlene Holt-Baker, the amazing Arlene Holt-Baker. Um, and we're just honored today to join the Frontline Essential Workers in accepting this award. You have inspired us, along with millions who have pulled us through this pandemic. Um, and we just hope you'll put some love in the chat to lift up these workers and the members of SCIU, AFSCME, APWU, NEA, UFCW, and Unite Here. So thank you so much. Union, yes. Unions build power from the ground up. Unions give working people a voice. And unions build the solidarity that keeps each one of us fighting no matter what. And through partnerships with the progressive movement and so many of our honorees and all of you gathered here tonight, we must deliver a just economy where all of us can thrive. But none of this work happens for free. All of us have something to contribute. And if you have the financial resources to give, I'm asking you to consider supporting community change tonight. We are in the fight of our lives. And we are so close to winning so much that will transform the lives of workers and our communities in this country. Every dollar and every dollar helps. Every donor helps. You'll help bring us closer to the wins that we need. So we want you to text CHAMPION to 40649 or click the donate link in the event chat box to give tonight. While you consider the support you can give, we're going to continue the program with a beautiful original piece by Community Change Communications fellow, Ayana Albertson. Ayana wrote the piece we're about to see this afternoon, and she was among the first fellows to start using TikTok to reach new audiences. 
Because of Ayana's leadership and incredible videos, Community Change launched a TikTok influencers program. Some of these videos are absolutely hysterical. You have to check them out, even if you're like me and a total TikTok novice. I admit it, I am a novice. Ayana is a spoken word poet and writer from Durham, North Carolina, and she uses her gift to impact, empower, and inspire others. Here is her piece, Rooted and Rising. We were all there, present, unprepared and terrified at times but together we committed ourselves to the climb to the uphill battle of all that was 2020 from pandemic to politics black lives to economic crisis this year was full of tragedy of trauma and triggers of heavy lifting and hardship but we learned of our own power how persistence will always push progress how we open the door of growth and opportunity we learned of our own bravery of daring to call racism by its name. Of challenging the freedom we so loudly proclaim. We realize that liberty and justice beat the mountaintop. Be the dream of our forebears and journey to glory. And a journey to glory. And we honor those dedicated to defiance, the organizers and leaders on the front lines, the fighters unafraid to disrupt efficient democracy, the champions changing the course of our history today to celebrate the small wins to the reconstruction of a broken system, to the confrontation of pain and poor legislation, we stand firm in our focus. To envision and enact a more just and equitable future for families to be held, for immigrants to be welcomed, for black lives to actually matter, we are rooted in this purpose. We are rising in our struggle. We are nurtured by the people and we are powered from the ground up. I refuse. With these words, Nicole Hannah-Jones laid the burden of repairing the harm of racial injustice firmly on the powerful people who maintain it. Nicole Hannah-Jones' scholarship and storytelling has rooted each of us in the hard truths of our history. And she challenged us to rise together beyond the very aspirations that we have so long failed to achieve. Long before the public uproar around the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill's treatment of her tenor application, or the outrage response to teaching the hard truths of race in America, Nicole was doing the work to elevate the voices, stories, and contributions that Black people and people of color make to our country. And she built a career of bringing Black young journalists into the predominantly white newsrooms that write the first drafts of history, co-founding the Ida B. Wells Society for Investigative Reporting and the New Center for Journalism and Democracy at Howard University. Nicole Hannah-Jones is rising up to challenge and interrupt the racial, economic, and political status quo for puncturing the complacency with which we view our history, for fighting for the journalistic and academic freedom of Black writers, researchers, and students, and for showing the power of choosing and winning the battles you continue to fight. Community Change is proud to honor Nicole Hannah-Jones with the 2021 Disruptor Change Champion Award. Thank you so much, Community Change, for this award and for all of the work that you do. I'm honored to receive Disruptor Change Champion uh, Award and to be joined in the celebration by so many others who are working to make this a more just and equitable society, as well as to be joined by my new family at Howard University. We are at a moment of impending crisis in this democracy. All across the country, legislators are passing laws to restrict our right to vote restrict women's reproductive rights, and to prohibit the teaching of histories and texts that more accurately reflect the often troubling history of this multi, uh, the often, excuse me, troubling history of this multiracial nation in which we live. And yet too many journalists and thought leaders are failing to recognize that danger. 
they're confident that this democracy and its institutions will hold. But the truth is, uh, we've only had a semblance of a democracy for half a century with the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Our democracy is battered and fragile, and too many in my profession are failing to rise to the occasion because they do not know our history and they fail to recognize that one of our two political parties is not actually committed to representative governance. That's why I'm founding the Center for Journalism and Democracy at Howard University, where I intend to help educate generations of young journalists in the historically informed investigative journalism that's critical to ensuring a healthy democracy. And that's why I will continue to use my platform to challenge narratives and to expose the way that racism and anti-Blackness continues to distort and corrode the nation in which we live. I am so very grateful for the recognition of my work. As historian Timothy Snyder has said, in these dangerous times, we all must pick an institution and defend it. That is a charge to each of us tonight and a charge I take seriously and that I hope that you will too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole, Lorena, the frontline essential workers, and all of tonight's honorees for your work and the power you build in this movement. I am Lisa Garcia Bedoya, Chair of the Board of Community Change Action. I'm so grateful to be in this space, even virtually with all of you. We are, all of us, part of the fight to transform this country, to bring more voices and voters into our democracy, to envision and enact a just and inclusive in society and economy, to build power from the ground up. This is lifelong work. And today we are on the cusp of achieving momentous transformation. This moment of possibility is rooted in the long, often unseen and uncelebrated work that organizers and leaders and groups like Community Change do every day. But none of these victories is guaranteed. We are also up against incredible threats. As we rise to meet this moment, I want to thank all of the sponsors of this event whose fine contributions are helping to power the fight ahead. I also want to recognize our champion sponsors, Katrina Vanden, who will, and our diamond sponsor, Chris Hughes and Sean Eldridge. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who has helped to build this movement and sustain community change for over 50 years. I'm asking that today you consider another gift. I'm asking you to throw down with us. Give what you can so that together we will rise. Text CHAMPION, that's C-H-A-M-P-I-O-N, to 40649, or click the donate link in the event chat box to give today. As our honorees have shared, the stories we tell shape the possibilities that we see. As an academic, I see so frequently how we judge ideas based on how many PhDs have lined up behind them. But there is such a wealth of untapped wisdom in our communities and wisdom that sits beyond the written word. I am thrilled to share with you all today a new music video by the Tacoma Pro Bono's Housing Justice Project and Tacoma Refugee Choir. They have been fighting for housing justice in Washington and to keep people in their homes. Partnering with writer-producer Lonnie Mr. Maeve Perrin, filmmaker Caden Carter, and artists Kingpin X, Jay Sears, and Smooth Jay-Z3, this all-black team created I Got Your Back to educate their local community and start the conversation on the impact of evictions and eviction rights. Uh, 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 
legacy, bitch, to get a primitive, killing me and my relatives. Putting us in the crisis, the driving gets to depression. There's way too much stress about my living situation. In our Black Lives Matter, we survive and trying to make it. I'm the man of the household, taking care of my possessions. My credit already treacherous, can't handle no eviction. The landlord don't care because I guess they got permission to take away my shelter because of money situations. Then COVID hit us and I had to stay home because the government and CDC don't really want me gone. My job ain't remote and I can't take out no loan, so I need a way to pay because eviction getting close. Look. Many people on this and eviction getting critical. Many people on this and they thinking that it's typical. No way to flow the money and nobody sees the principle. Congress needs to better this Aye. is starting to get political. Everyday people and everyday acts of courage eventually change everything. Ajahn Poo's words capture the vision and strategy of the organization she leads, the National Domestic Workers Alliance. The NDWA works to win respect, recognition, and labor rights and protections for more than 2.5 million domestic workers because their work makes all other work possible. Since 2007, domestic workers have been organizing as part of the NDWA, and they are now at the forefront of critical policy fights for a caring economy, immigration, income support, and workers' rights. That's because domestic workers live at the intersection of all these issues. In 2020, as many of us retreated to the safety of our homes, domestic workers were on the front lines of both the public health and child care crisis. Rooted in their intersectional lived experiences, the voices of domestic workers are rising. These are voices our society too often silences and ignores precisely because of who domestic workers are. Women, black and brown women, immigrant women, mothers. Women doing care work that has been undervalued since its roots in slavery. Community Change is proud to partner with the NDWA in the fight for federal relief as part of the Care Can't Wait Coalition and the We Are Home campaign. And to honor iGen Poo and the National Domestic Workers Alliance with the 2021 Community Change Champion Award in Community Organizing. Thank you so much. On behalf of the members of NDWA, I want to thank Community Change for this incredible honor especially to be honored alongside so many inspiring and brilliant leaders of our movement. I especially want to thank Dorian and Lorella, who are two of the most talented leaders in our country. We need to invest in them, strengthen them, and protect them as the national treasures they are. It's been a secret goal of mine for FBWA to be recognized at one of these events because there's truly no greater honor than to be recognized by the people you love and respect the most. The family who know you the best and who also you trust the most. Community Change is an organization that understands what we do, why we do it, who we are accountable to, how challenging but also how joyful and enriching organizing work is. Organizing is an art and a science, but different from many arts and sciences. Organizing is never a solo proposition. Organizing is about the art and science of creating trust between people, building relationships and community, and creating the collective confidence and context that allows people to feel powerful and be impactful together especially people who have been systematically disempowered. For domestic workers, that work is particularly meaningful because nannies, cleaners, and home care workers who are majority women of color, black and brown, many undocumented immigrant women, work in really isolated conditions, hidden behind millions of unmarked doors in every neighborhood in this country. It is the work that makes everything else possible, but the workers who do this work 
can't ends meet on the income that they earn. So we at NDWA have been building power for this workforce for almost 15 years, powered by 70 proud affiliates and seven chapters and an online community of about 250,000 workers. We, through our organizing, possible possible again and again for domestic workers. And it's our partnership with community change that is as important as they come. You are a critical anchor in the field of organizing, expanding the resources, capacity, and power of those of us who believe and have placed all our bets on the idea that in the end, it is everyday people and their everyday acts of courage that collectively change the course of history. And we at EWA are so proud to be on this journey with you at Community Change and so honored by this recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Aijin. Thanks to you and to the National Domestic Workers Alliance, to Lorena, to Nicole, to Arlene and Becky, and all of the frontline workers represented by AFSCME, APWU, NEA, SCIU, UFCW, and Unite Here. You are not just holding the torch for us and lighting the way forward. Each one of you also embodies what it is to shape the future, to expand the boundaries of the possible, and then to help build the political conditions to make the vision a reality. Each of you, each of you is a pragmatic dreamer. We see the hard evidence of your impact today. Consider for a second the Joe Biden of the 1990s compared to the Joe Biden of 2021. Many have observed that he's not a centrist Democrat. He's a politician who moves to the center of where the party is at. And so as the center has shifted over the past 30 years, Biden has had to shift himself in order to keep up. The key question is, why did the center shift? And the answer is the center shifted thanks to the work of the movement. We have challenged the powerful neoliberal agenda. We have changed the terms of the conversation on every issue that matters to our communities, on the care economy, on the right to a living wage, on the war on welfare, on the war on drugs, on policing, on prisons, and on immigration enforcement. Jax Renzier once said, politics exist because, because those who have no right to be counted as speaking beings make themselves of some account. Those speaking beings are us. We are immigrants, we are Latinas, we are Black and API and Muslim and South Asian. We are working class and disabled and low income people. And where has all of our work to make ourselves of some account, where has that brought us to? It's brought us to the present moment when we are on the cusp of passing into law a transformative package, the Build Back Better agenda that would create real material change in the lives of our communities and begin to create the just, inclusive and equitable economy and society that we are fighting for every day. We are on the cusp of winning on childcare, on housing, on CTC expansion, on immigration. And that's only because we've been shifting the center for the past three decades through speaking up, through organizing, leader by leader. And that's exactly why we talk about building long-term power. It is the power to shift the terms of the debate, to set the policy agenda, and eventually to create the political mandate. We also know that the mandate at the federal level can lag behind the debate because arcane and racist rules continue to protect entrenched interests of wealth and whiteness in both Congress and the executive branch. Those rules limit what we can win today, but we will always know what we are fighting for tomorrow. We pick up today where our parents and grandparents in the struggle left off, and we help create the future to turn over to the next generation. 
We must make a choice every day. And every day is not easy to say yes to the world we want and yes to the work that it will take to help create that world. We must remain stubborn on this, resolved, and to practice, as Miriam Kaba says, the discipline of hope. So as our hour comes to a close, I want to thank our sponsors for making this gathering possible and specially recognize SDIU for both sponsorship and also their partnership in the struggle. I want to thank Susan Reitzel and Yena Richardson and thank you to the whole institutional advancement team at Community Change and to everyone at Community Change who helped to bring us all together tonight. We need all hands on deck this to win this year and to continue to build our power from the ground up in the months and years ahead. So if you can make a gift right now, please text CHAMPION to 40649 or click the donate link in the event chat box. And if you are fired up as I am right now, head to the expo booth on the left of this platform. Community Change Action is driving calls to members of Congress in the past 10 days. We've already driven over 4,000 constituent calls to key house members and senators. From that expo booth, you can also learn more about relational organizing and how to organize your friends and family. So listen, this is our time. We are rooted in decades of struggle, of movement building, of behind the scenes work, and that is how we are rising. We are on our way to victory together. We thank you y la lucha sigue. Buenas noches, good night.